Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of... The Space Patrol! Space Patrol is presented by Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa in the bright red can and those terrific Nestle's chocolate bars. Doctor, what's wrong? What did you see in the spectroscope? Commander, Commander Corey, blast away from that star immediately. It is ready to explode. Stand by for exciting action on the exploding stars in just one moment. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Space Patrollers, here's the news we've been waiting to tell you. Yes, sir, boys and girls, Nestle's new coconut bar is really out of this world. It's so delicious, like nothing you've ever tasted before, because there's never been a chocolate bar like this. Now, look how thick it is. So every bite is a real chunk of delicious chocolate eating. And say, wait till you see the other Nestle's chocolate bars in the bigger size. They're really something. There's a thicker milk chocolate, a big almond bar, a bigger, crunchier crunch, and, of course, wonderful new Nestle's coconut in this red and cream pack. They're all so big, so delicious, so satisfying, and they're only a dime. Space Patrollers, why don't you try the wonderful, bigger, more delicious Nestle's chocolate bars? You'll love them all, and especially, you'll be nuts about Nestle's coconut. Now, here's news about Nestle's sensational new rocket cockpit. A real model with moving view scope, coder and decoder, and cannons that actually fire. Every space patroller wants a rocket cockpit for his very own. Well, every space patroller can have one. Listen, in a few minutes, we'll tell you exactly how. space, a new galactic observatory station has been assembled to better observe the distant stars of this galaxy. Inside the new island observatory, head astronomer Dr. Van Meter watches with anticipation for new worlds to divulge their presence to him through the eyepiece of his huge reflector. Suddenly, he is startled by a spectacular sight. Amazing. A Nova. It's actually a Nova. In its beginning stages. The magnified image of a distant star upon which his telescope is focused begins to swell in size. The thin, flaming boundaries of the huge sun become distorted and vague as boundless energy is unleashed with the fury of a billion hydrogen bombs spreading and spreading its lashing tongues of gas and flame, devouring all matter as hungrily it reaches out farther and farther, multiplying its intense heat. Heat capable of vaporizing even its own satellites. Dr. Van Meter is truly observing with awe the fiery turbulence of a nova, the explosion of a star. 23 light years away from the space station observatory, on the man-made planet Terra, far beyond the destructive range of this phenomenon of galactic space, the Nova, observed by Dr. Van Meter, is nevertheless destined to have its effect. Some days later, in the central office at Space Patrol headquarters, there is someone else who, like Dr. Van Meter, is expressing interest in astronomy. Cadet Happy is studying a chart of the solar system. In fact, there is interest in things galactic being demonstrated by nearly everyone these days. By Carol Carlyle, daughter of the Secretary General of the United Planets. By Major Robertson, Security Chief of the Space Patrol. And by the Commander-in-Chief himself, Buzz Corey. Of course, his first model is much too large for many practical purposes, like carrying it aboard ship, but as it's refined, its size will reduce. You know, it's almost inconceivable. A space opponent will actually transmit through hyperspace. 
Do you realize how big the United Planets is? I mean, how far it is across the solar system? It's seven and one-third billion miles. I just figured it out. Seven and one-third billion miles. It's like our boy Happy's brushing up on his astronomy. Well, that's a good thing once in a while. We travel through space and hyperspace so rapidly now that you know, we sometimes forget just how vast it really is. You know, this is what amazes me. Just think. Light travels at 186,000 miles a second. Do you realize... It would take light 11 hours to cross from one end of the solar system to the other. Wow. Like I was saying, light travels 186,000 miles a second. Yet, with this new space phone, we can transmit instantaneously to an observatory station 23 light years away. Well, this employs a gravity magnetic principle, Robbie. It's not restricted to the speed of light. Smoke and rockets. You know what? It takes Pluto 90,000 days to revolve around the sun. And it only takes the Earth 365 days. That makes one year. Yeah, but just think of it. A year on Pluto is uh, 90,470 days long. Wow. Happy. Yes, sir? I like the interest you're showing in astronomy. Well, thank you, sir. But I think you're becoming much too impressed with the size and importance of our little solar system. Little? You call seven and one-third billion miles in diameter little? In galactic space, it's insignificant. Robbie, show him the chart of our galaxy, will you please? Yes, sir. Now, Happy, you see what appear to be clouds. Well, yes, sir, they're Milky Way. Uh, actually, they're uh, stars or suns, just like ours. Exactly. Several billions of suns like ours. Most of them larger, many of them possessing a system of planets revolving around them, like ours. Well, I know that, sir. Now, this big, impressive solar system of ours, Hap, can you find it for me up there? I think so, sir. Uh, at least it's a general location. Go ahead. Yes, I've got to see. Huh. Thank you. Well, let's see. The, the whole galaxy is uh, 100,000 light years across. That's uh, six quadrillion miles. Yes, sir. Now, our solar system is about 20,000 light years from the outer rim, so that would make it about one-fifth of the distance across. Uh, that would put us right about there. How's that, sir? Yes, that's the approximate location of our sun and planets, all right, but... But what, sir? You covered it up. Covered it up? I, I just put the pin in the chart. Exactly. Now, uh, assuming that you hit our sun right on her nose, that pinpoint made a hole larger than our seven and one-third billion mile solar system. What? Smoking rockets and... In the galaxy, our, our solar system is so small it doesn't even count. And this is only one galaxy. There are countless billions and billions of other galaxies. Wow. Millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. Carol, uh, give me a number. Any number. Quick. A number? Yeah, just a single-digit number. Any number. Well, uh, four. Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Not 400, not 4,000, not 4 million, just plain old four. Good old four. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I've had my head up there with all those real crazy big figures for so long that I needed a nice little number to bring me back to normal. <laughs> normal, yeah. yeah. Any number you can count on one hand. <laughs> What's that? Oh, in the hyperspace of form. It must come from the new observatory station. Yeah, it has to be. That's the only piece of equipment we've got out of our system. Space Patrol headquarters, Commander Corey speaking. Commander Corey, is that you? Yes, Commander Corey here. This is Dr. Van Meter, calling from the Galactic Observatory Station. Well, it's good to hear your voice, Doctor, especially from such a great distance. Commander, I have witnessed something that I don't quite understand. Something alarming. Well, uh, what is it, Doctor? What is it you've seen? Star. Well, Doctor, exploding stars in galactic space are not unheard of, are they? And as such, one or two over a period of years is to be expected. But, Commander, I have witnessed four novas in less than a week. Four in one week? Yes. But more alarming than that is the fact that the exploded stars form a straight line. A line that points straight toward the United Planet. And I now have evidence that more suns are ready in the pre-nova stage, getting ready to explode. Commander, if this continues, our own solar system is in danger of being completely destroyed. And you have no idea what's causing it, Doctor? None whatever. That's why I'm calling you. Can the Space Patrol be of any help? I don't know. My advice is to try. 
Go blast off immediately. Corey out. Probably have to help me carry this. What's the hyperspace phone? May not be a practical size, but we're going to need communications. We're taking it with us. Somebody cut in Star Drive. Standing by, sir. Star Drive. Star Drive. With a tremendous surge of power, the giant gravity magnetic generators drive the big battle cruiser through space, past the orbit of Pluto, beyond the outer boundary of the solar system, deeper and deeper into the void, faster and faster into hyperspace, where the 23-year light year journey is reduced to an almost timeless detachment from things familiar. When automatically huge relays clank into place, and the gravity magnetic power drive is shut off, Boy, I want to apologize for what I said about your mathematical prowess. Your astrogation's perfect. Huh. Uh, can you see the observatory station? Dead ahead. Prepare to couple the station. Stand by. Standing by. Terra 5 enters a coupling port where its forward half is sealed. And within a moment or two, Buzz Corey and his companions are learning firsthand from Dr. Van Meter of a new gigantic danger that threatens to annihilate the entire galaxy. You mean you can actually anticipate these novas? The fifth one proves it. On what do you base your theory, Doctor? Yeah, was it something you saw in the telescope, sir? Not in the telescope, in the spectroscope. That breaks down the light reflected from a star, so you can tell the elements the star is composed of. Oh. Well, uh, just what did you see? A bright blue line, Commander. A bright blue line which does not correspond to the line of any known element. You've never seen this line before? Never before in any star. Well, do you have any idea what the line might represent if it doesn't correspond to any known element? I'm afraid, Commander, I have. Oh. What do you mean, afraid, Doctor? Could be a new element in our own universe, but uh, I don't think so. Well, if it isn't, Dr. Van Meter, then what is it? Contraterrene matter. Smoke and rockets. Contraterrene matter is inside out matter. Matter made up of elements completely the reverse of the elements that we know in this galaxy. Where did it come from? That I can't say. But this I can say. If contraterrene matter is present, in these stars. That would explain the explosions. You see, that would repulse all of our known elements. It would make them spread, set up a reaction, and generate an over. Smoke and rockets, and they must come from someplace clear outside, clear outside our galaxy. But where? You mean another galaxy? All right, now, with the exploding stars forming a direct line to the United Planets, the important thing is to find out how to stop it. The problem is this. My telescope can only view these stars from one angle. If we could see around and behind those stars, maybe we could get a clue where this matter comes from and how to stop it. A fast spaceship could do it. Sure, we already know which one is due to Nova. If we could get behind it before it happened, then... Smoke and rockets, what am I saying? If that thing should explode while we were there, we'd be burnt to cinders, or maybe completely vaporized. It's got to be stopped. What Cadet Happy says is right, Commander. You would be taking a tremendous risk. You might never return. I think before you decide, you should look at this fifth nova, which is just now in progress.
Of course, we can only imagine the intensity of a lover from this distance. But we know that the normal action of a sun is that of the fission of a huge hydrogen bomb. And the action of a nova is the same, only intensified innumerable times. A holocaust of fire, flame, and destruction way beyond our conception. And there's no question about my decision, Dr. Van Meenen. After seeing Fifth Nova, we have no choice but to investigate star number six. Zooming through space can be you. Yes, you can have all the fun and excitement of flying adventure when you get your rocket cockpit. You can sit behind this control panel that's an exact replica of Commander Corey's XRZ. Watch how it works. Step up the anti gravity rockets. I think we can land here. Better send our code messages first, though. Let's see. Wow, don't bother. We're being followed. Put your ship in the star drive and we'll cross over the timeline where no enemy can follow. Roger. Let's see. The year 3,855 ought to be safe enough. Okay, Sammy, set. Whew. That was a close one. Well, look safe now. How about going home? I could use a hot cup of Nestle's instant cocoa. Hi there, Tony and Sammy. Did you have a good flight? I'll say, Captain Barkley. Just like we always do in our rocket cockpits. There's so many adventures you can dream up. And we sure go for all those slick moving parts and working dials. The view scope. The star drive control. The atomic cannons. Space patrollers, I hope every one of you will get your rocket cockpit so you can join in the fun and decode the secret message Commander Corey is going to send. Send your name and address and 25 cents in coin together with the lid from a can of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa or a tracing of the front of the label to Nestle's Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. That's your name and address and 25 cents in coin together with the lid from a can of Nestle's Ever Ready Cocoa or a tracing of the front of the label to Nestle's, Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, back to Space Patrol! The blue line in the spectroscope is getting bluer in more and more intense, Commander. It cannot be too much longer now. We won't need much more time, Doctor. We've come out of star drive and are close enough to use rockets. We're approaching the sun now. Stay away as far from it as you can. Well, we won't go any closer than we have to. Do be careful, boss. Be well, Carol. We'll contact you from time to time. Corey out. Fire rockets. Fire rockets. Hold your course as it is. It'll take us past the sun. A minute or so, we'll be looking at the other side of it. Major, do you really think we'll see anything behind it? Hard to tell, Hap. Something tells me we're going to be lucky even if we get behind it. Doctor, what's wrong? What do you see? Commander. Commander Corey. Blast away from that star immediately. It's getting ready to explode. We get a clear view of the offside of the star. If we don't do it now, we may never get another chance. Don't wait. It's only a matter of seconds. All right, Doctor. Have you heard it? Full rockets. Yes, sir. Hey, it happened. The Nova. It, it blew up. Let's get out of here before those hot gases get us. Did they get away in time? Well, did they? I don't know. There's no way to tell. Cut rockets! We've got to cut rockets! Let's go, let's do it. We've lost our sense of direction. Rockets may be driving us back towards the sun. What do we do now, Commander? That we can't do. Maybe if we're lucky. The expanding gas is moving. Keep us ahead of the flames. Why do we can't take this much longer? Just be glad we weren't any closer when it happened. Look at this! We're getting hot. What is 
You'll never find out if we can toss around like this. Yeah, we'll just have to hope that our endurium hull holds out against this peak. Look at 6,000, Commander. How long has it taken over to reach its peak? About two days, Happy. Two days? The way the insulation keeps it coming through that insulation, we won't last two minutes. Please answer me, please. This is Carol calling Terra 5. Can you read me? Can you read me? It's no use, Miss Carol. The Nova itself is causing so much disturbance. You wouldn't be able to communicate, even if they were safe. Even if they... You think they're lost, don't you? Don't you? Well, answer me! They couldn't have much of a chance. It's, it's 9,000 degrees, Commander. Can't be much longer. It's too hot to hang on. My hands are burning. Commander, where are you going? We can't just give up. Maybe I can see something at Lori and I didn't mean to do that. I understand. You won't mind if I use your ship, will you? Use my ship? What for? You need information about what's on the blind side of those stars. I'll get it for you. No, Miss Carroll. I couldn't let you do that. I'm afraid you can't stop me, Doctor. It's all right. I'm sure Buzz would have approved. Danger of the Nova. Oh. What's that sound, sir? I don't know. We found it. Found what? The sound coming from a strange looking object out there. An object that's right in line with the Nova. Take a look. Smoking rocket. Please, Miss Carroll, we'll call in some other space patrolmen. This isn't a job for a girl. I'm sorry, Doctor, but I'm here. I can fly a ship and I can see. I'm afraid there's not enough time to call in anyone else. Medicori calling observatory station. Come in. Buzz. It's Buzz. must be wearing a protective force shield. We'll never be able to hit it then, Commander. Congratulations. Well, it's not over yet, Doctor. Have you seen any more? No, no, that was the only machine, but somebody or something put it there. And now, it's our job. We've got to find the answers. 
for all these questions. Hey, Major. Hmm? You know, I'm getting so used to thinking in all those astronomical figures that I can even write them, no matter how big they are. You want to bet? Sure. I, I can write down any number that you can say. Is that a promise? Sure. Try me. All right. One million. Simple. It's a one with a one, two, three, four, five, six zeros after it. One billion. Simple. You just add three zeros. One Google. That's easy. You just add... One what, sir? A Google. That's a one with a million zeros after it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. A million zeros? But major. You promise. Oh, yeah. But that'll take me a week, sir. Oh, not quite half. At two zeros a second, 24 hours a day, will take six days. Six <laughs> days? Major... Oh, well. <sighs> In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized breakfast cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Jimmy had a special blackboard in his room, and he put down on the blackboard everything he was going to do every day. Only some days he didn't do much at all. And then something happened to Jimmy. Know what it was? Checks. That's what. He charged up with checks and had more power for more fun than he'd ever had before. From then on, Jimmy's blackboard looked like this. He had just about as much fun as any kid you ever saw. And you know why checks gave Jimmy all that power for all that extra fun? Well, watch, because we'll show you right here. In every Chex, there's not just one power-packed grain of wheat or rice, but more than ten grains of power in each super-tasting bite-sized Chex. Have more fun power yourself. Charge up with wheat Chex or rice Chex today. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite-sized checks taste good to me. Bite-sized checks. Wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now, a scene from next week's exciting action. Dwellers of the Prime Galaxy. Commander, look. A hatch opened in the side of that sphere. And a guy came out and he's walking toward us. He's not wearing a space suit or a helmet. He's right out there without any protection, right out in space. Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy, in an attempt to save the United Planets from fit and total destruction, are confronted with one of the dwellers of the Prime Galaxy. Next week on Space Patrol. Brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, and famous Nestle's chocolate bar. Remember, N-E-S-T-L-E-S, -E -E Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. Be sure to hear Space Patrol on ABC Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station. and Harriet Starr on ABC television.